we finished our series about factoring by considering principle number three. If you can't group, create an expression so that grouping works. We're going to be looking at some formulas where grouping is not obvious. Uh, maybe there's not enough terms to be able to group. Maybe we have the wrong number of terms. And so what we want to do is we want to look at grouping in a new way and discover something. So it turns out there's a special situation that guarantees grouping will work. And if I look at how grouping occurred, maybe we can discover what that is. So I have an equation that's set up to look like a grouping problem. Right, we've got common factors. I've got uh, C plus D is a common factor for these two terms. And where did that come from? Well, that came from in the first example, in the first two terms, we had common factor of A, which became this factored out A. And in the second term, or the second pair of terms, BC plus BD, we had a common factor of B that became the factored out term. Once we, once we realized that, we were able to continue the problem by factoring out the C plus D as a common factor, leaving the product of uh, C A plus B. So there are these four terms. I've got A, I've got B, I've got C, I've got D. And what I want to observe is that if I go back to the completely unfactored version and think about those terms, Notice the first and last terms, AC and BD, and the middle terms, AD and BC, both the outer pair and the inner pair have all four factors. They're added together, but they're all there. And so this is going to be our suggested idea. Um, if I have those four terms, Two of the terms are going to set the factors. So AC, let's do the first and last terms. If I multiply these together, I get A, C, B, D. And what we were then able to do is split that up into two factors, AD and BC, that match the other terms. This is where we're headed. This is what we're trying to accomplish. So this is our strategy. We're going to have an expression, and our goal is to choose two terms. And so in our mind, we're thinking, all right, so that's the AC and the BD. We're going to multiply them together. That's giving me this product of all the factors. And we're now going to discover a way to refactor that into two terms so that the new factorization gives me the remaining terms and then I'll be able to expand the formula by grouping. Of course, this is going to make more sense as we do some examples. So our first example is one that maybe you know other methods for. Uh, in particular, many of you maybe learned a technique called reverse FOIL where you work backwards on your factoring. But I want to illustrate this principle of, uh, of using the grouping. So my formula has three terms. It has x squared, 3x, and minus 40. And a general rule is we want to pick terms for our two terms that have, um, well, for polynomials, we want to pick the highest power and the lowest power and put them together. So the two terms I'm going to combine are x squared and negative 40. So I'm going to multiply those together and I get negative 40 x squared. And what we're looking for is we want to find factors of this that when you add them you get 3x. So we're looking for factors that add to 3x. Okay. 
Now, the thing is, I have a formula f minus 40x squared. And for them to add, I, I need an x in each term for them to simplify. So we're looking at terms that are going to be some number x, so something x, and something else times x that multiply to give me negative 40x squared, but when they add, they give me 3x. And in this problem, it just turns out to be the factors of negative 40. So A and B are the factors so that A times B is negative 40, and A plus B equals 3. Okay. So if I think about what are the factors of negative 40, uh, maybe you jump right away to the solution, but... Um, you know, one way to do it is to sort of be methodical. Negative 40 and 1, no. Negative 20 and 2, um, no. 3 is not a factor, but 4 is. That gives me negative 10. Now we're getting close. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Um, 5 is a factor with negative 8. And then we start going the other direction. Negative 5. And we suddenly hit on the pairing, negative 5 and 8. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this original formula now as x squared and the 3x we're going to expand into those two terms, minus 5x and plus 8x, minus 40. Okay? So I've gone from three terms to four terms, and this I'll be able to do by grouping. Now, this is also exactly what I would get if I found the foiled version of my answer and multiplied it out. So you might think about how that relates to methods you've already learned. So the first pair has a common factor of x times x minus 5, and the second pair has a common factor of 8 times x minus 5, so that I can factor out the common factor times x plus 8. And that is my factored version. For our second example, I have three terms. I've got x squared minus 2xy minus 24y squared. And again, I need to find um, factors so that when I add the factors, they add up to a third term, but when I multiply them, I get the product of the other two terms. So here, notice uh, this middle term has 2xy, and if I multiply it, um, it's going to be hard to get an x squared as another term. What I really want to do is I'm going to pick the terms with the squares as my two working terms. So x squared and 24y squared, those are the products of my outer terms, so that I get a factor, negative 24, x squared, y squared, and I want to find factors so that when I add them, I get negative 2xy. And the way that I'm going to do that is both of my factors need to have an xy term, so that when I add them, I get negative 2xy, and when I multiply them, axy, bxy, I get negative 24x squared, y squared. Okay? So this is going to reduce to a question just about the a and the b. My numbers, a and b, have to add to negative 2, and they have to multiply to give me negative 24. I'm looking for factors of negative 24 that add to negative 2. Okay, So I'm going to think about those factors. Um, negative 24 1 times negative 24 
is too far apart, right? When I add those, I get negative 23. 2 times negative 12 is negative 10. 3 times negative 8. I'm getting closer, that's negative 5. 4 times negative 6, there we go. When I add those, I get negative 2. So 4 plus negative 6 gives me negative 2. I found the factors. And so I'm going to rewrite this negative 2. So x squared, instead of negative 2x, will be plus 4xy minus 6xy minus 24y squared. So these middle terms, I've modified the minus 2xy to give me two terms so that now I can think about my grouping. Okay. Now we have to be careful. This minus sign, I need to be careful that I write it as an addition and then I'll factor out the negative. Alright, so what do we get? This first pair has a common factor of x and the other factor is x plus 4y. If factoring by grouping is going to work, I need to have a common factor of x plus 4y. So if I think about what my common factors are, I've got negative 6y, negative 24y squared. I have a common factor of negative 6y, leaving a factor in the first term of an x, and plus 4y in the second. And, of course, that is what we hope for. So that when I factor out my grouped term, x plus 4y, I'm left with x minus 6y as the sum of those other factors. And that's my factored version. You might have learned a rule about the difference of squares. So here I've got a... Uh, turns out this is a difference of squares. But this can be thought in the same context as our previous problems. I'm going to take two terms, and there's only two terms to work with. 4x squared and negative 9 squared. And I'm going to multiply them together to give me negative 36x squared y squared. And when I add them together, that needs to add up to whatever's left. It has to add up to 0. So I need two terms that are going to cancel each other. So I'm going to have axy plus bxy is supposed to cancel. But when I multiply them, a, b, x squared, y squared, I'm supposed to get negative 36 x squared, y squared. So a and b are factors of negative 36 that when added to each other gives me 0. And the only way I'm going to get that is if they are equal and opposite, if I could write, let me make that look good, a equals 6 and b equals negative 6. So I'll rewrite my, my formula. It's 4x squared, I can add 6xy and I can subtract 6xy. So those terms would cancel. Minus 9y squared I have my four, ter my four terms. I'll group them. Pay attention to that negative sign. And the first term has a common factor of 2x, leaving 2x plus 3y. The second factor, we're always going to choose that negative sign as a factor. So a common factor is negative. 3 is a common factor. y is a common factor leaving 2x and 3y. And if this is going to work, those have to be matching so that I can write my factored version 2x plus 3y times 2x minus 3y. And so how does this relate to what you learned with difference of squares? If I had an a squared minus a b squared, 
the rule is that it's got to be a plus b times a minus b, the 2x is the square root of the 4x squared, and the 3y is the square root of the 9y squared. So the method of difference of squares is magically, well, it's not magic, it's math, magically a consequence of grouping. For our last example, uh, we're going to do a, a, another trinomial. So here I've got 3x squared minus 2x minus 8, it's a nice quadratic. Uh, the thing that's different about it that gives a little complication is that it's not just x squared, it's 3x squared. And if you use this method of um, creating a new term so the grouping works, uh, you don't have to remember any sort of funny extra rule. We just create two terms, we'll group and factor just like we have before. <clears throat> All right, so our, our principle is we're going to take the uh, x squared in the constant term and we'll multiply them together to give me negative 24 x squared and we're going to look for factors that add to negative 2x so we're going to have something x we'll have an a x and a b x that their product is negative 24 x squared and their sum is negative 2x of course, that reverts to um, statements about their constants. The coefficients a, b have to multiply to give me negative 24. I'll be looking at the factors of negative 24 that add together to give me negative 2. Okay, now hopefully we're starting to get a little bit quicker, so you don't have to list all of them. Notice that negative 6 times 4 and negative 6 plus 4 give me the values that I want. So I'm going to expand that negative 2x, 3x squared, to be negative 2x is negative 6x plus 4x, and now we have minus 8, and we're going to, not a surprise at this point, use the method of grouping. Our first common factor is 3x, leaving a remaining factor of x minus 2. The second pair has a factor of 4, again leaving an x minus 2, so that I get x minus 2 times 3x plus 4. So every, fa every polynomial that you can factor by um, reverse FOIL or other techniques that you might have learned in algebra um, this method of grouping also will work. So if you want to learn just one method, I recommend the grouping method. It'll take care of all the different cases.